Greetings programs, welcome to the grid, I am Sark. Uh, today we're going to have a look at a tool called HeroForge. Uh, it's a it's a service marketed at tabletop gaming environment um, where you'd like maybe print out um, your original character for, for use uh, on a tabletop, but um, for somebody who needs to produce a good deal of digital content, um, the digital parts of the tool are actually free or very cheap. So um, I'm going to show you what my purpose is today with that. And maybe you get some ideas for some creative plans you have. So it loads up here in Flash or whatever it is. See, so you have like a base sort of humanoid model. And you don't have to have any 3D modeling skills at all uh, to use this tool. It's, it's almost like a, um, I don't know, like a, one of those uh, doll house character choose the, choose the clothing <laughs> little uh, games. But instead, uh, it does use a 3D model. It'll actually generate an STL. They charge for the STL. They charge, let's see, where is it? They charge $8 for an STL. They charge $20 for a plastic model, and then you can start spending silly amounts of money getting higher quality uh, prints. But we don't need to print the model. Uh, we can take advantage of uh, a screenshot, and uh, I happen to be running some, uh, some role-playing games online, and sometimes I can't find the tokens I want. So uh, if you just look down on the mini and you turn off the base and press the screenshot button, they've even made it so convenient as to uh, spare you the trouble of, uh, of clipping out the model from its background. So it gives you a nice uh, PNG. Uh, at a reasonably high res. I, I mean, you don't need a super high res for what is essentially a miniature, right? Because uh, all you really are looking for is a silhouette and maybe some bright colors or something. So um, the level of fit fidelity available is more than sufficient. Um, today, I would like to make a, a giant. My players don't know it, but they're going to face a stone giant. Let's see what we have from the beginning as we start customizing things. We can choose male and female. Uh, apparently they've got frogmen and frog women, so that's fun and quite silly. Um, but I think they've actually got giants on the list. Let's see, half orcs, half demons, dragons, minotaurs, forest guard. What is that? Oh, okay, it's like a centaur kind of thing. Um. Or, or I guess that's a fawn. Uh, I don't know what it is. What's it supposed to be? Okay. There's just something out of somebody's fantasy game somewhere. Elephant men, fairy tale goblins, zombies, skeletons, hobgoblins, rabbit men, half giants. Well, if you've got a half giant, but you don't have a giant? Centaurs, orcs, kobolds. I mean, I'll take a half giant. What's the difference, really? It's all a question of scale. Have you got a giant? It looks like you have not. Half giant kind of works for what I'm thinking anyway. Yeah, we'll go with that. So it looks like a big guy. I think my giant's male, so we're going to go with that for now. Um, you can get in here and start playing around with the face. So, the default by default they gave me broad facial features, assuming that I would want that, right? That makes sense. That would be kind of strange to give a giant, like, uh, delicate features, right? I mean, you could buy it, but probably broad features make more sense. We could play around with the expression a little. Uh, let's see. Let me go with this. <laughs> let's 
let's see. Yeah, I think bold, broad. The broad features kind of feel right, so I'm not too unhappy about that. I have softness, so this should be more harsh, right? Um, my giant's going to be a, a stone giant from underground, so. Uh, is he smiling? Is he snarling? I see him as very patient, but not necessarily friendly. We'll go with that. Ears. What kind of ears did they give me? They gave me protruding ears. So they may be a little exaggerated. His head's a little small, too, relative to the size of his body. So we're going to play around with that a little bit in a minute, I think. Um, I don't know if I want protruding ears. Can we have, like, human ears? We can. Might go with, like, some more normal human-shaped ears. Um, I don't think there's any reason to, like, make him too crazy. Alright. Human ears it is. So. We'll look at the hair. I don't know if my giant needs any hair. Um, I kind of like him as this, like, sort of <laughs> bald Mr. Clean guy. Uh, let's see. If he has hair, it's going to be efficient, right? It's going to be some kind of top knot or, you know. It's not terrible, actually. I might leave that on there. So, we'll, we'll come back, maybe. I don't see my giant having a beard. Uh, not my rock giant, anyway. Maybe if he was, like, some kind of storm giant from the sea. You know, he could have some kind of wild beard, you know? But I, I think he's clean-shaven. Eyebrows. Leave his eyeballs, eyebrows off is kind of weird. Let's see. Ooh, he could have, like, these rocky ridges coming off his eyes. I don't know. It's a little too exaggerated. Everything in here is going to be very exaggerated because it is um, designed for, for printing at a small scale and then painting, right? So if you're not going to have the detail be really extreme, you might as well not have it at all. Hmm... We'll leave the leave the eyebrows off for now. We'll come back to him. Teeth. Uh, he can have normal teeth. I don't see any reason his teeth should be all messed up or some kind of canine teeth or anything. I don't think he needs horns. Uh, fun as it would be. Can we have multiple sets of horns? Oh, this gets quite silly. <laughs> gets kind of fun. Stalks. <laughs> So you can see there's a lot of a lot of creative ways you could you could use some of these tools, maybe in unintended ways. Um, I wonder if we just like put spikes all over his head, make him look like Darth Maul or something. <laughs> How many spikes can we put? Fragmented stone horns. I mean, it's super badass. Uh, it's just too high fantasy for my setting. My setting tends to be. Um, tends to be more boring. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Uh, it tends to be more grounded, right? Um, there's enough crazy stuff going on. I don't need to to take the art up to eleven. Uh, let's see. Humanoid torso. I don't see any reason to give him like scale or robot arms or anything. So sticks to that. Uh, nothing silly with the legs. He doesn't get, like, centaur legs or anything. Um, doesn't get a tail. Uh, we can muck with his measurements a bit. Fit him for his suit. 
So uh, he should be a really big dude, right? Daniel Boone was a great big guy. I uh, should have a bigger than, yeah, bigger than it was, right? Like you don't want it like a shrunken head. Uh, I don't want to exaggerate it too much either, so we'll just put it like there. That seems about right to me. Uh, play around with his weight. I think he's a little svelter than that. Maybe scrappy for his size. Uh, he should have good posture. He's sort of an elemental, primordial thing. I, I don't, I don't think giants have bad posture, do they? I guess they could. How bad can I make it? <laughs> it's kind of fun. This one has good posture. Uh, he should be, should be buff, but not like crazy. Right? It's not fem, not female, so. Um. Kind of strange to put breasts on him. We won't do that. Play around with the waist. Um, yeah, I don't want him to look emaciated. So he ought to have eaten sometime this year. Uh, well, he shouldn't be overeating. He is still exercising. We'll assume. Okay. Not too much of a belly. Um, <laughs> his thighs shouldn't be too thick either. But they should be believable, right? You wouldn't want to, like, rail thin. And I don't think he needs a particularly large bottom. <laughs> He's got a large enough bottom. That's fine. Okay. Maybe even. I don't know. Can't tell under the clothing anyway. Good enough. <laughs> I'm really not going to tell from this angle. And if I can, uh, it's because I've exaggerated something well beyond what it should be. So, no tail. No turtle shell. <laughs> okay. Clothing. Um, I think he should be dressed simply, but practically, right? Um, which is always hard to find in fantasy. People are either dressed to the nines in, like, insane, overwrought, you know, studded leather, Xena Warrior Princess stuff, or... They're like, he's th now he's a giant baseball player. That's kind of funny. Um, PJs. Or they're like, it looks like they just crawled out of a cave like 30,000 years ago, right? Um, and nobody, nobody sort of expects, like rags, really? Would you go around wearing rags? Um... So these are just like the fantasy tropes, and it's it's very Hollywood and everything else. And again, it makes sense because you got to paint the mini. He definitely is not some kind of aquatic entity. I think we could go through and choose the choose the clothing pieces one by one. So uh, that's probably what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna pick scrap armor, whatever. I want to pick something where there's almost nothing on him. Okay. And then we'll go and do the stuff one by one. I don't think he has any headwear. No. It just makes him look silly. Um. I have a bird's nest on his head. <sighs> silly shoulder pads. Absolutely not. We're not making a Warhammer figure. All right. <laughs> sensor bar. Okay. I don't think there's anything an anatomically exciting going on here, so we shouldn't need the sensor bars. Uh, let's find... Let's just find something like... It's a bit much. Go out and look for fantasy art that is understated. See if you can find anything. It's hard to come by. Uh, absolutely not. That's quite silly.
So beggars can't be choosers. I'm going to have to to choose from among the options available here. Um, and since I didn't choose to model a whole guy myself in 3ds Max or in Mudbox or something, I am going to have to take what they give me. You could download the STL, but they charge eight bucks for that. It's a bit steep. If, if it was four dollars, I would do it. All right, I'd download the STL and then I'd modify the clothing to my heart's content. Um. He's not a chef. He's not a football player. Gambison? He's not wealthy. He lives in the woods. Um. He's not a biker. He's not a conquistador. Buckskin. That's buckskin? You could make an argument that it might be. Okay. Man, we're picky. Nope. Nope. I mean, some of this is just horrendously anachronistic, right? If you want him to be some kind of Middle Ages guy, shouldn't be running around with 18th century stuff. But later. Uh, I don't know. I thought I would find something relatively simple. Commoner's shirt. But it's got this, like, it's got a jerkin or something over it. Um... Doesn't have buttons. Fur trim shirt. A bit exaggerated. Like he just needs something lightweight. Harness. You know, maybe I'll just leave his shirt off. You know, why, why can't he have his shirt off? It's fine. It probably makes more sense for him. He doesn't really feel the elements the way that a uh, softer person might, right? He's kind of like partly made of rocks. Or at least will be in my mind. And then my players will have to deal with what I'm thinking. <laughs> Let's see. Wrist wraps. I mean, it, it just feels like a Halloween store. Oh. <laughs> so, maybe not the best feature of Roll20, or uh, Hero Forge, is the clothing. But, bangles. Maybe on, like, one arm. Now it feels like a genie. Hmm. I would settle for these on like one arm. Maybe the left arm. That makes sense to me. It's kind of practical. Maybe he's uh, handling some some things that are uh, sharp, or he's uh, able to use that to sort of. Um, misdirect somebody when he blocks with his left hand. I, so, I don't know why I'm thinking of him as a monk. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's because of the shaved head. But uh, I do think of him as a simple fighter. I don't think of him as, as using a lot of machinery or trickery. I think he uh, confronts his problems in a direct manner. Uh, let's see. No. No. Meh. Maybe that's alright. It's kind of fun. He'll patch it up. Uh, doesn't need to, to have new stuff. He's not fashion conscious. 
Okay. It's going better now. Sandals. None of the sandals have like the wooden piece underneath. They're all like <laughs> modern flip flops, basically. <laughs> we'll go with that, that's fine. It works from that angle. Okay. Uh, he ought to have some equipment. I think all he really needs is some kind of staff. He could have food. He could just like be holding an apple. Well, that would be cool. Some bowl of stuff. A pizza. No. Where's the apple? Where's the apple I was promised? We have a drumstick. That's kind of it's a massive drumstick. <laughs> like what bird did he pull that off of? Uh, that's funny. Better if you could scale the items a little bit. Well, he's not. He's not an evil shaman. Uh, let's find a simple, simple stick. Because I feel like that's all he needs. He's a really big guy. He hits you with a simple, simple stick. It still hurts really bad. Ooh, this one has crystals on it, though. That's kind of fun. Right? Yeah, and it looks more natural, right? Like it grew that way. Like maybe, maybe he's a druid. Maybe he... Maybe he wild shaped it. Or it's quarter staff. Look with crystals. Alright. Does not need a shield. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Again, the angles on these are quite exaggerated because they want to be able to print them. So, um, if there was something like a very small tear, that's that's a massive shield. See, that's that's not a very small tear. She's a giant, but it should be like, okay, no shield, no rifle. <laughs> no RPG set. <laughs> That'd be scary. Okay. Well, what else? What is all this? Hmm. You just. It's just a crystal ball. How would you like to play dodgeball with a giant? That would probably go badly. <laughs> no, you don't need anything else. Don't need a scroll. Don't need an hourglass. He's got a staff. That's important enough. All right. So we did away with the base. We're, we're not we're not three D printing it. We're going to be creating a uh, a token for like roll twenty out of it. So we don't need the base. Yeah. Yes. Yes, the mount would be squished underneath his mighty stature. That's fun. So once you once you go to the XL size, the mounts are out. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Uh, let's see. Is there some ceremonial way he could be holding this spear? I don't really want him... Like, I don't need him to be an action figure. I guess that's kind of ceremonial. I was just thinking it would be like, you know, kind of maybe more casual. Not that casual. No. No. I don't need him dancing. That's kind of okay. It'd be cool if I could just have him sort of like leaning on something. Like, looking like he's not doing anything too awful important. Like, not asleep. That'd be bad. 
But couldn't he just be... Where was that one with the handout? It was kind of okay. All of this is, again, it gives a lot of flavor, um, so that's what they're going for. They're, they're trying to make it as expressive as possible um, in as small a package as possible. So all that totally makes sense, but um, I do a lot with descriptive text, so I really want things to look as they are. Uh, okay, I'm done. So here's the fun part. I can just screenshot this, maybe even zoom in a little. I don't even affect, think it affects the, uh, like the focal angle or anything, uh, the zoom angle. And I can take him and go paint him up and put him in my Roll20 game uh, to torment my players with. So that's it for today. Check out uh, Hero Forge. It's a free app. They're not paying me. Um, they, they do charge for the printed minis, and they, they frustratingly charge for the, for the STLs, but, well, let's see, Stone Jar. But, uh, this is free, right? I've, I've got a PNG. Let's see if I can find the thing, downloads. And there it is, and it's good to go. So just to show that I'm not full of crap when I can say that the, the software is pretty broad, uh, here's, here's one I did for a friend the other day who wanted to play sort of like a goblin alchemist. And uh, I think they're going to paint that one up. So uh, quite a bit of variety in what you can do there. All right. Good day.